Hey y'all, thanks to some uh, very nice uh, donations. I mean, a few dollars here and there and stuff, and it all adds up. I was able to save up to buy this little chop saw. And one of the things that was in the reviews on it, this is just a cheap one. You're like, well, this, this one won't be good enough. Let's get something better to cut it open with. We'll get this job on the road. Anyway, some of the reviews that it showed on this thing was that uh, um, that when they got it and set it up, it wasn't real accurate, you know, on the on the cuts as far as where and the miters and stuff. So let's see what we can do with it, what it's going to take to set up and and have it be accurate. I, but I've had cheap ones or helped set up cheap ones before, and. Uh, there is a process of what needs to be done, and I'm just going to show you what I do. Oh man, they got a lot of stuff in here. Man. Ah, let's see here. Oh. Yep, let me put it on the ground first of all, and we'll get it open this way. There we go. I will be needing that. I don't know I'm rich. Anything else in there? Nope. Okay. We'll set that there for now. Throw that in the box. Let's see here. Unpack. Ooh, shoot! That's not what I really wanted. I didn't realize that this was a compound chop saw. <coughs> I wouldn't buy a compound chop saw for a cheap one for trim work. I just want it for rough type of stuff that I do around here. But, uh, for the price, oh well. And I'll throw that over there. And let's see what we get in here. Okay, I already got the Allen wrench. I'm surprised it's not in this bag. Yeah, one thing that they have. Uh, directions, eh, not needed. The clamp, I hate these things. These are garbage. And this here, I think that's an extension. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll look and see what that is before I throw it. Airbag, not needed. What this is, I don't know. And the handle we will need, we'll probably need some of this stuff right here. Anything else? That's it. <coughs> okay. First of all, I want to, uh, Well, one thing that they did is they put a bolt in here, right where this handle goes, to operate that. First of all, let's, uh, get that set in the upright position. Yeah, and I'm going to have to get a wrench or some pliers to remove this bolt. That bolt looks bigger than this. Hmm, but I know that that's where that's got to go. Anyway, we'll be right back. Okay. And through, through super technology, we're right back. Okay. I have this... 
deal where you know if you if you got the right tools why wear them on out when you can just use a pair of pliers if you want to bowl this up then you know why would you wear out a good wrench and waste it on a on a lousy bolt yeah, I use pliers use channel locks on these things okay yep that screws right on in there just like I thought And we'll bring it right to zero. I'll tell you one thing that's going to have to go is this guard. I ain't going to take it off right now. But you all know me. I ain't no safety Sally. For you guys on out there, you might want to leave the guard on there. I have my reasons for not liking guards. But uh, I'm not telling you to take your guards off. But I have my reasons. I've had these things explode on me. Yeah, really safety. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do, we want to see, make sure that our back edge is straight across. Let me put my glasses on so I can see this. Okay. It's real close. It's not perfect, but a person needs to know that because that will make it to where things could be off just a little bit. And when this is a perfectly straight across, well, here, let me uh, bring the camera up close and show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, let's see if we can do this here. If you look, now I'm holding this up because it's kind of a little tippy. Well, I ain't going to hold it up too much. Anyway. You probably can't tell it on here, but we're tight here, and a slight gap here, over on this side here, a very slight gap, and we're talking about like a 32nd of an inch, and it's not much, and then it's back to tight here. There's not much you can do with that, because this is all one unit that goes across here, and this is, you know, if you try to bend this, I've tried to bend that straight before, uh, this part here. I've tried to bend this part before to get things straight. You end up cracking it and breaking it. So that's close enough. I'm not even going to worry about trying to mess with that. Okay, now the next part, we don't need the level on there anymore. That was just for a straight edge. And that's just a cheap master mechanic level one. I don't recommend buying those. They're junk. Next of all, we want to see how square this is. And we want to check it from both directions. And I'm reading the same thing. When I put the square on here, I ain't going to show you this time, but the back point here is just slightly open, like the 32nd of an inch. And it's probably going to be the same thing this way. It's harder to see it here. Yeah, it's slightly open. There's maybe a 30 second in the back there. Worst case scenario on a deal like that where this is bit back. When you put your board on in here and you cut it, it's going to want to, after it cuts all the way through, or starts cutting all the way through, it's going to want to pull back that little bit. A 32nd of an inch isn't going to be enough for the blade to bind, you know, for it to kick or do any damage. So it should be good enough for framing purposes, rough cut. My wife is going to be using this quite a bit for cutting up limbs and stuff like that for firewood. You know, just little stuff. We're not, we're not looking at it for a, you know, high-tech deal. I don't let my wife run the chainsaw. The radial arm saw is just too big for her to be handling. It's 220 and stuff. Uh, and she likes cutting up little little stuff for firewood and stuff. So I wanted her to have this here as well as be handy for me for some projects too. Anyways, that's that part. I want to check the compound part and just see how accurate it is at the 45. Which way did this turn? Okay, I'm just just going to see. Okay. This, this sucker here, to me, is sliding backwards. Now, maybe it's just me. 
This only compound only goes one way. Some of them go both ways. Now I gotta get in here and check this angle right here. It might be easier. Okay, it's way beyond the 45. And it's showing it right at a 45. So this is not accurate. What we'll do now is we'll change it like one or two degrees. Let's see here. I'm going to have to take the glasses off for this here. And bring the saw down as low as possible. And this is where it would be easier if I had somebody. Ah, come on. That's pretty close. that or tightening it. It's loosening it again. Let's just see if that's at 45. And it needs to come back down a little. I will need my glass to see those numbers or those degrees. I have it only one degree off right now, so it's less than a one degree off. firewood anyway. Now, I don't have a screwdriver here. I thought I was going to be using this, but I guess I don't need it. But let me just see if I can cap this over. Uh-oh. No, this sucker is plastic. This little needle. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to check that part of it. You know, I'll have to adjust this, loosen this screw, and I don't have a Phillips, I ain't gonna mess with it. Well, you know what? Why well, do we need the Phillips? I got these channel locks. That'll work. Now, anybody that, that uh, is really picky about using the proper tools, I'm doing this type of stuff just for your benefit to pick this apart. You know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to use the proper tools. Oops, I gotta back that off a little bit. Pretty close. Okay. Oh, I just realized something. You know what? Here's what can be done right here. They got this bolt. There's two bolts here. And that's this is just setting the needle of where the angle is at 45. These bolts here, I can turn this. I keep on turning that until it's out and brings it right to the 45. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. 
that's pretty close right there. Let me take a look at that with a square. Nope, I actually went too far. That's right on there. Now, I'll probably want to get some uh, Loctite or something on the threads so it won't vibrate and change. I can't turn the nut by hand. It's pretty stiff, but I would rather have some like, Loctite on there. Now, let's check this for upright for square. <laughs> And it seems to be right on for a for square this way here. So I don't need to change this bolt over here. Just one second here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about on those bolts for adjustment. Okay, for adjustments, what I'm talking about is there's a bolt right here. And this stop is right here. This lays over on the side. No, this stop right here lays over on the side of it. You'll see. You see that as it drops down down. So you take this bolt here and you raise this up and down. And this will adjust it to where you want it to stop at. If you want it to stop at a 45, you got to turn it to where it stops dead on with a 45. Do not trust this, this angle here deal there for setting the 45 or the 90. Don't trust this. You can always uh, adjust you know, if it's, if it's a half a degree off, you can always count a half a degree off on each. If you want to do like a 30 degree angle or whatever, just whatever is off, learn what it is and adjust accordingly. When you go to adjust for the 90 degree straight up and down, there's this one here. You adjust this screw here up and down. See how it comes on down and it's right, right on that bolt. I didn't need to adjust this one at all. Only that one. Just a wee bit on that one. So next of all, let's see how it cuts. Let's, uh, well, I guess I better plug it in first. Never mind my junk I have down here. That's what's plugged already. Okay. Need the cord. This is with the factory blade that came with it. Nothing fancy. You'll be fine for cutting firewood. And let's see how it cuts. It says this saw, uh, which all my other ones are 10 inch saws like this here. Wood cut a 2x6 or a 4x4. That's about the extent of it. If you want to cut a 4x6, you got to roll it on over. But, I ain't too worried about that. Okay. And the safety switch right underneath here, you got to push. I'm going to disable that. It actually cuts pretty nice. Cuts pretty good. I'm happy with it. So, uh, yeah, I have a 12 inch miter saw that I let a friend of mine borrow. And it was uh, it's, uh, a, por a porter cable uh, 12 inch miter, compound miter. Really nice saw. I let a friend of mine use it, which I shunted of, and I knew better. And he broke it. And, uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't do construction anymore. I can't justify going out and spending another 800 bucks. So, it's gone. Oh, well. All water underneath the bridge. So, anyway, I got this here, and it'll do everything that I need now. Uh -huh. 